Greetings and a warm welcome. Hey, thank you for joining me everyone for what is still really the beginning of 2023. I hope you are all in a safe place, a well space and a happy place as we merge into the new energy field and the reality of 2023. Yes, it's been a long time since I've been active on the channel for many, many different reasons. And I've said them a few times in the little videos that I have made. A lot of it has been down to extra work requirements here in the physical plane. And some of the other things that have been going on have been as if sitting back in a field of observation. That is how I've found myself pondering what exactly is going on on this planet and in our lives at this moment in time or in this timeline in particular. And it has taken some deep degree of connection or thinking or pondering or listening to others indeed, which is what I have been doing, as to what the experiences that we are actually all going through at this point in time and what we are experiencing and undertaking and perhaps what we are awakening to as well so it's a very convoluted multifaceted aspect of our lives that are undergoing deep deep change i remember saying i think it was in my night 2019 earth predictions videos or my yearly prediction series that I said as we move into the 20s the strong message that I was receiving was that we will never experience life the same again and that our our human understanding of life will be completely changed by the time we get to the end of the 2020s. Now when I said that or when I received that message I wasn't aware exactly how the changes were going to be taking place. So even for myself, I found that a really extraordinary perspective to be holding on to or to be um, propelled into thinking along that sort of waveform. So as 2020 emerged itself in a very strange manner here in New Zealand, through the trauma of the extensive bushfires that Australia was having because that energy field was then pushed over to New Zealand via the uh, predominant weather patterns, we received the same hazy smoke that Australia was being set up with at the beginning of their year. And it's at that point in time on the sort of New Year's days in January the 3rd, 4th and 5th of two, of 2020 that I realised we were heading into dire changes as a civilization. I think you could say, with the way the um, energies were unfolding and with the messages that were coming to me about the changes that were taking place. And it wasn't long after that, of course, that the whole uh, corona situation evolved and muted and took shape. And there was the beginning of a massive structural change for citizens on the planet. And it happened from the top down. And the reinforcing of the few who controlled us or who had control in the form of governments that enabled them to be able to utilize power and fear to literally lock us into subversive energy fields and contain us very very quickly in such a short time the entire planet literally shut down as we know we've all experienced it to one degree or another and over that time the observation i guess began from my end and I was pondering perpetually what is going on here you know what are these dynamics that are unfolding so quickly so fiercely so vehemently across the planet and how did it get to this stage you know what is the directive what is the outcome what do they want from us in the end and I think by now as we merge into the again still the very beginning of 2023 
we can all pretty much sum up what happened over that period of time. We are, most of us, well aware and awake of the situations that took place and are still taking place and are merging even of today. Now, every country had its own particular points of hardship and um, extreme loss and deprivation and cruelty and unjust uh, lawmaking and sadness that went with it. And that belongs to those specific countries and it can be never taken away from them. And it, it's a line now that has been drawn in the sand that will forever change the energetic field of the people who suffered the grossness of the leaders at the time who helped to propagate a lot of these instances that took place. But then, of course, there were also other spectres of the whole event chain where there were terrible, terrible loss of lives. And for that, that is a very sad situation that, again, can never be altered or changed um, it is part now of the journey that we walk and the experiences that we have all been through. And for the people who did lose their lives over that time to in part the actual Corona V itself, it was the most harrowing and traumatic thing that any person or any family could have gone through. And by the time the laws were made, so that people couldn't be with their loved ones in their moments of passing, that seemed to even exemplify even more the harrowing trauma that we would go through as individuals. So my prayers and thoughts and blessings go out to all of those people who suffered any of uh, situations along those lines. And may there be a healing initiative that is allowed to be freed up from that and can there be a reigniting of the energy fields of the past over loved ones can they reconnect with the people still here at some point or another now this may happen for those of you who went through that experience you may find them coming through in dreams and the dreams will be very real and they will be much more pleasant than the actual final time with them on earth so keep yourselves aware of the ability for dreams to come through at this point in time they will be more likely to be on a slightly astral level than just in a dream level so it will seem slightly more surreal or maybe even more closely connected but i guess i should um stop there this will probably be a long video because i haven't been with the channel for such a long time i've just changed the way i am recording the video i had my iphone earpieces in um, and i noticed it was picking up all of the background cicada noises so i've swapped out to the little microphone i'm not sure which will be the better quality but interestingly enough for me personally when i have the earpieces in I uh, feel a little less as though I am open to hearing the messages coming in from the higher energy fields, the spirit guides, the celestials and who else is here with me for the reading. But what I was going to say was I should introduce what we are actually doing without going into too much more depth at this stage. So this will be like an earth prediction series. We will use the side cards which are over here and we will use these as well to sort of foretell us what is happening from March the 14th. So happy Valentine's Day for those of you who are seeing this on Valentine's Day. And if you don't actually experience it then, the energy of love is unfolded within this video to you. And as I dealt these few cards that came out here, I'd only actually wanted to settle with two and I just turned the bottom of the deck over and found this card, the lovers, and I thought, well, how apt for this whole Valentine's energy for it to be propagated and brought to the surface. So it's imbued with love at the very essence and it's love that's coming from me and sending out galactically. I'm also in the background on my computer watching this amazing video that is the gate to oneness when i say watching it's the background energy that's being infused into the reading 
It's the gate to oneness, 963 hertz frequency of God's and spiritual awakening, the pineal ground and the crown chakra. And it's the most illuminating, visually encapsulating sight. It's just, it's euphoric to look at. So we've got all this beautiful high energy euphoria coming in. And I think this is how we're moving into 2023 with a degree of a feeling that we are breaking through the hardness or the hardship or the tyranny that has been holding us down since the beginning of the 20s. So while I have been in observation pretty much over these last nearly three years, I suppose, because it sort of started to come into my awareness in the late 2019, I have been closely monitoring situations that I feel have some sort of tether to the overall dynamics of the energy field that is playing out around the whole planet. And that energy field from the observation that I have made and listened to and been watching appears to be in part this subjugation of the light that should be traversing earth. Now it's happened in many, many different ways. But part of all of that is, if you like, it's a strange thing to say, it's part of a necessity to purge and to move forward. Sometimes we don't move forward without having gone through something difficult. In fact, in most cases, that is the way life actually emulates. That's the way we learn. It's the way we grow. The hardest things that occur can often bring about the most growth or the most insight or the most awareness or understanding. And we as a humanity have been going through that intensely since 2020. Now I still don't think that the 20s are going to be an easy decade and I still believe firmly that we are only just at the beginning of this transformational movement that we are going through. There is much, much more yet to unfold. There will be much more happening, many, many more diverse changes. Now part of this whole change is a very, very deep galactic one that is far beyond the comprehension or even the ability for us to upload or to be able to comprehend or to filter out. It's the move into the age of Aquarius, which has been going on for some time at very slowly subtle levels. This is no longer a transient, stable path that we're on. And it's not, it's not for Earth either. Because when people talk about things like astrology and in reference to humans and they talk about planets you know Uranus or Saturn or Pluto or uh, Jupiter or Venus or Mars or even the smaller ones and, and the asteroidal planets they forget too in many ways that Earth is part of the transition into a new age and so Earth herself is also going through these incredible changes as are a lot of the other planets. A lot of that information is hidden. It's kind of like, unless you dig deep, you won't notice or you won't be told by many sources that the other planets are going through massive changes on the surfaces of their planets as well. It is not just Earth. So that brings us into a whole other field of you know, climate change propaganda and such alike. But I'm not going to get into all of that necessarily in this video. There's obviously room for many, many different uploads of videos and different topics of conversation that we could get into. But the overall scheme of this one is just to bring a little bit of enlightenment or understanding as to what we have been going through over the last three years. And the main words that I can put down are tyranny. Now, there have been several governments globally that seem to have moved themselves quite hard to a leftist socialist perspective. Socialism, whilst it might seem a good idea, fundamentally can't prop itself up. 
it falls by the wayside when the money stops coming in and the money comes from the workers. It comes from the people who have the desire to create. And when you create and you form a business or you form a, a knowledge base or a, a sector of movement of goods or products or services and then purchases who purchase them, that creates the money that creates and allows the socialist systems to pay out to people who are living on a social um, system. Now governments can enable socialism to grow and prosper by the very rules and the dictatorship that they put in place. And socialism generally weaves its way down into a harsher reality of Marxism and communism. And when they stoop to those levels, the individual becomes superfluous to the needs of the community. It is a commune and a commune is a group. Now, we've been taught for quite a while, you know, the group is powerful. The group is the way you should go. The individual is selfish, but the group becomes an object of like a mass and the individual loses its encompassing perspective. And that perspective is creativity. It's individuality. It's freedom. When we are encompassed into socialism or communism, we have no freedom. We are part of a puppetry of political ownership by a few elites at the top. Now, you, you can call it because the terminology on the planet at the moment, you know, as, as things morph, obviously, and new people come on the scene and younger people, they create new terminologies, new ideas, new perspectives, and a lot of them are great. And that is what IT and digitalization is all about. There is no doubt that as we move forward, the human body will become part cyborg. It will become integrated with human technology and there's no, oh, sorry, technology and there is no stopping that. That we can never go back into the past. We are only ever evolving into the future. And that is something that we all have to understand and perceive. But there are some pathways into the future that may not be the best pathways to choose. And at the moment, we are on the precipice of either choosing a left pathway that will remove the freedom and the individuality and the creativity of us as humans, or we go right and verge right back towards the art of freedom and the maintaining of democracy that we understand as humans, which gives us the individual right to freedom and ideas and creativity and passion. And that card there is very much about passion and that is very much about love. And that's very much about hard work and working for the group, you know, the number 10, like a, like a commune. So we're on the precipice of choice as a humanity. Do we go with the ideas that our youth are being taught in our uh, education systems and our universities about the woke concepts of you know socialistic trends and, and looking after everyone at, a, at the same level and that everyone should be completely equal? Do we go down that road and end up in a bit of a pile at the end of it? I mean, we've known since the first and second world wars that went primarily to fight for freedom to fight for democracy we've known that communism doesn't serve people well it stifles the soul it stifles the spirit it stifles the freedom so do we move down that lane because we are literally in the point of having to make some really big decisions as a humanity? Or do we pull ourselves back and rebalance? Uh, well, it's hard to say. There's so many people out there now saying it's harmful. People have too many rights. They, they speak and they say the wrong things. They form hate groups. They form this group. They form that group. They, they can do what they like. They're creating a degree of fear around the idea of freedom and what it entails and what it can give for us. 
they're moving us into digitalization, in particular of our currencies, our money, our funding. They're taking control of that, which pushes pushes us into a social credit state. And we see it especially in places like Canada in particular. America's going to follow through fairly soon. And then it brings me back to New Zealand where I live and what we've been going through for the last five years. And it has been, to me personally, it has been hell and torture. And I have found it very, very dark and all encompassing. There is no doubt that during my time of observation and spending time alone a lot more, well, we kind of had to globally, all of us did, I came to the realization that I am a freedom fighter. And that is one of the things that I came here on this planet to be ignited with and to be propelled to open up and to be there for people to help them understand or to climb on board the freedom train. I couldn't ever be held captive or prisoner or have my rights of individuality taken from me. They are the most important aspects of my soul and my being and I would fight for them, I guess like my father fought in World War II, for freedom for this planet and I will do the same. Now I've lived under this um, reign of, most of you will know, our female Prime Minister Ardern. She has been a manipulative, evil, dark force who everyone knows, it's, she, she didn't actually hide this, but she was with the Socialist Youth Party and she was their president for many years. And as it turns out, she only just resigned from that 18 months after she was elected Prime Minister for our country. Now during her tenureship in the short five year period before she handed her resignation in on January the 3rd or 4th or something, she's, she's just left being Prime Minister because quite frankly, a, she's a narcissist, I'm sure. She didn't want to lose the election, which she was clearly going to do because people have woken up to her, her darkness and her agenda of dragging this country through the mire and literally ruining us because we were like a trial. We, we were like a trial for the rest of the world, easy to manipulate, a, a small island nation with a small population, we will trial all this bunch of stuff on them and see how we get on and it has caused anarchy and chaos in this country we can only hope that we can backtrack her evil and dark energy plans and bring us back into the light she handed her resignation and we now have a new leader who um excuse me will i have some water who is still in the same Labour Party as herself. And unfortunately, he was already backing all of her policies for the last five years, and he created some of them. He made some monumental um, mistakes or bad decisions to do with the, the jab and the lockdowns that we all had to suffer in this country. So he is part and parcel of the dark energy that is still here and unfortunately he's rising in popularity now we have a national election for electing a new governing body on the 14th of october of 2023 and if we uh, re-elect labor we will go downhill into the spiral of almost not being able to climb out and we will become a completely socialist country that will lead itself quickly into some form of Marxism and we won't come back from that for many, many years, if at all. There's a few uh, requirements for communism or you know, the lead into communism. One of them is health care, control health care and you control the people. The second one is poverty, increase poverty level and you have citizens on welfare, poor people are easier to control. At the moment, they've done both of those two. The third one is debt. Increase debt to unsubstantial levels. That way you can increase taxes, increasing more poverty. 
Now over the period of since 2019 to now, our finance minister, who is nothing but a show pony, he has, he has no degree in any form of financial acumen at all. He has now borrowed over 55 billion, in fact it'll be way more than that, I'm probably far underestimating of money to, to prop us up but that money has to be paid back and it comes with interest charges and it comes with failing businesses and immigration at an all-time low. We can't find people to do basic jobs in this country anymore mainly because most of them are all just can be on handouts for the for for benefits for social benefits because why we're turning this country into a, a social state another one is gun control remove the ability to fend, to defend themselves from the government well you all know about the call for Christchurch after the mosque attacks in Christchurch on March the 15th uh, in 2017 I believe it was and Ardern made that global headlines wearing the hijab which you know not many people appreciated I think female Arab woman didn't appreciate that because they'd fought for years to not have that as a mark of telling them how to live and how to how to wear the hijab. We now have this whole terrible incident in Iran over the death of Masha Amini and, and the whole hijab issue, yet Adern was prophesized almost for wearing it. That was the beginning of her gun control laws in this country, which she made within days and was was an illogical stance at the time. Then we have welfare take control of every aspect of citizens life by giving more welfare out. They're doing that by the day. The, the, that Grant Robertson announced a couple of months ago that he was so proud that something like more than a hundred and 50,000 more people now than a year and a half ago were requiring social handouts and they're proud of that. The mentality of this thinking is so warped and so distasteful that it's beyond um, it's beyond reality in so many ways. And then one of the last factors of requirements for communism, education, take control of what people read. Now they've taken ownership of our publications here in New Zealand. The government bought them out, and we now have legacy publications and TV stations that are not reporting truths. They're reporting falsities. They're giving only one perspective of opinion from certain aspects of New Zealand. We're going through quite a uh, rigorous racial tension issue here as well in New Zealand, which is really dividing the nation. And in part, this is being played up by uh, Dern's government and some secret agenda non-transparent things that they've been doing behind doors and one of the other things that uh, is a requirement for communism is to remove religion remove belief systems from people and we have always been a fairly non um, clerical type country we don't particularly follow religion so it's very easy to move us out of the belief totally and they're now teaching children in school a whole different array of uh, you know being open and this the things they're teaching our children in our schools about sexual behavior and teaching them very young about very inappropriate attitudes around sex without the understanding and the awareness about the emotional trauma that can go on behind it. So those were some of the issues that we faced here in New Zealand over the last five years under this socialist, communist, Marxist, Ardern-led Labour government and they're still going at the moment and they are trying to make sure that they win the next term in. So we have a whole bunch of uh, interesting problems that we could look into even for New Zealand because Ardern is tied very, very closely with the UN and with Klaus Schwab and I'm sure a lot of you know that. So is Canada's leader as well and the two of them seem like these t two buddies that sort of, you know, so sugarcoating each other's moves. It's a little bit sickening. But... I'm convinced that we were used as a guinea pig to see whether it would be easy enough to infiltrate into the minds of the citizens these changes that need to be taking place. And for the most part, 
it actually did do quite well here in New Zealand. We were fooled into some sort of myopic stupor, to be honest, but we are starting to wake up now and we are starting to see a couple of good politicians coming through that are bringing us back into the opportunity of voting back to the right again. So that's been some of the background observations and feelings that I have been experiencing here in New Zealand. Now at the beginning of this year on January the 3rd I had this really really strong message about the fact that this year was going to be a year of major weather cataclysmic events and it was a it was a doomsday type message. It wasn't nice, it wasn't pleasant and I thought oh goodness not another miserable year so, so far for New Zealand in the top half in the North Island, we have had four major storms already and we're only on February the 14th as such. Interestingly enough, that's the local fire alarm just going off, which sounds like a war siren, like a siren of, of warning. So, in those four major events, we have had almost utter total devastation and it has come from the weather patterns and they have been full on unbelievably forceful apocalyptic events that we have been through without relief and it has been one after the other after the other almost just days apart because it's only over a six week period and we have had four of them. We've just had Cyclone Gabriel go over Auckland and we've had loss of lives unfortunately very tragically innocent people and some of them have been people who are the responders the first responders and the rescuers who have lost their lives trying to save others which is heartbreaking we have seen roading networks being demolished we've had massive power outages it's like the water is coming in to purge us at some level and there's been this amazing dichotomy of the North Island has been absolutely pummeled, literally being reshaped, it's being torn apart, it's being ripped asunder and the South Island has had the most perfect summer ever hot dry sunny days in fact they're on water watch they're not allowed to use their water because they're running out we're so un inundated with water we don't know what to do with it but at the same time it's polluted water now because it gets mixed in with all the storm water so we're the tail of two countries we're separating we're being we're being so pulled apart and i think a lot of it has to do with this energy field that has been started up by the darkness within the socialist communist agenda that's come from way way up in this like the top people these Klaus Schwab the WEF the UN you know infiltrating it back down to our infantile leader who's allowed a lot of this negativity to take place of course globally on the global stage she was admired and everyone thought she was a compassionate wonderful warm person she was very very good at, at hiding her truth I think narcissistic people do that quite well so we are being purged at the moment trying to bring ourselves back into a positive harmony base where we can feel the light again and today interestingly is the first day of light that I have seen in eight days you know we, we've had I think four days of sun since January the 1st and remember for us this is our summer this is when it should be the lightest and the brightest when we should be able to invigorate those rays of light coming in that give us so much warmth and glow and positivity and it's being kept from us so there's always reasons why these things happen there, there's there's something very very deep going on we're kind of like fighting for a, a breath we're fighting for freedom we're fighting for balance we're fighting to get rid of the dirt and the darkness that has invaded us so it can't, we're getting support or we're getting messages or we're getting input from a galactic core as well now I say that because 
we come back to this galactic thing I was talking about a while ago saying that the earth is part of all the changes that are taking shape and part of all of that is the, the move into the age of Aquarius so there are galactic forces allowing Gaia mother earth to go through her changes that she requires to to be able to move through her next cycle I don't know if any of you read Bill Bryson's short history of nearly everything it was a book that was available it would have been probably 10 or more years ago it was very very popular and there was a part in there that's that said you know earth has changed over the billions of years it has been here it, it is it goes through cycles not dissimilar to the seasons on earth and the seasons of mankind and the seasons of animals even we all have a birth a, a life in the middle and then we have a death cycle and then you can be reincarnated again and that is what earth does and we happened to have been living in a relatively calm period a halcyon period of relative normality but that was never going to last and we are moving out of that halcyon period of perfect weather balance and perfect temperatures for the sustainability of life we are moving with earth as she transverses into her next cycle which will be different than what we have experienced for the last I don't know could it be 50,000 years evolution is always evolving it is always moving it is always taking shape and the only way we can keep going is by evolving with it not going back into the past but in saying that we come to the fact that this year seems to be about water or weather events and that they would be severe events that message that I got and it wasn't just weather events there were other big events that were going to be severe and my heart goes out to Turkey and to Syria and all of the people there who have passed away in the event of the earthquake the numbers are still rising and my heart breaks when I see it every time the the travesty the loss the pain the suffering this just everything it is so sad so this year will be full of extreme events and we have to be prepared for it and we have to except it's part of the ongoing adjustment the way that earth will become um, there's something else about the water that I was just listening to Pam Gregory and Pic Magenta Pixie and they mentioned the water especially for this year as we move into a new cycle and they talked a little bit about the oceans and sea water and as they were saying that I myself picked up on that and I thought yes we are electrical by nature the human physical body and the water is part of the electrical circuitry or the cycle so the uh, water that we are getting dumped on us and here in New Zealand in particular at the moment because we've just been through such extreme dumping on since the beginning of January is part of if you like a cleansing but it's part of providing knowledge for us some of the weather storms that we will be receiving now globally will be encompassing the water that is melting from the poles and also from glaciers around various continents the glacial water that is tens of thousands up to perhaps 50,000 years old as well as the polar caps that water is melting into our seas as it melts into our seas it then gets uptaken into the storms that form and then dropped back down onto our land then into our river basins and down into our aquifers where we eventually absorb it by drinking it as humans so for some reason we are being downloaded with information that is coming from the historical uh, genetic coding that will be entrapped in the 50,000 year old polar cap waters and glacial waters on the planet so the water is coming for a reason it's either coming to enhance us or to give us knowledge as well so this is part of the change part of the awareness part of the awakening part of understanding the journey that we're on too so that's an, a really lot to sort of get to in one short message I have a lot more 
to say but I think you have to sort of stop at some point and what we will do now is um, move into some of these cards and have a look at the messages that are arriving from there. But just one other thing to mention, over the past two years in particular, so 21 and 22, this beautiful watch that I wear, which is a really high quality watch, it's what I use for my timepiece, it has been playing up something amazing. So I have these incredible time anomalies that occur with it. And they usually would be an hour of time anomaly, like they might slow up for an hour, it might go faster, or sometimes it was half an hour as well. But then it started happening with clocks as well. You would get clocks in the house that would be half an hour slow or an hour slow and they never actually stop so you'd put new batteries in them they work fine for a month or two months then they'll suddenly be an hour slow same with my watch put new batteries in again or you put move the time handles back you know the um, the hands back or forth and they catch up again now these time anomalies have becoming more and more frequent and more and more bizarre and lately this clock and since the beginning of 2023 my watch rather not clock but lately my watch has been giving the weirdest patterns of time anomalies there's nothing wrong with it it has a new battery in it it's a good quality watch it technically would just be working so in fact I'll check if the time is actually the right time now it is my, my watch does watch the time it matches the time on the computers so nothing is going on at the moment but that's another anomaly that's been happening and it makes me think constantly of some sort of time shift or shifts in dimensions you know we know there are more aspects or portals opening where we can access dimensions quicker and it seems that it's happening more and more often it's a really interesting perspective but let's come to these three cards here which I just pulled up as a basic background energy for perhaps where we're at we're in the middle of February we're going to move into March March is also going to be very much a powerful time of changeover of the energies it's the equinox time we have some powerful moons coming and going you know in the month of February we had a perigree moon the closest to earth in 50,000 years we've also just had an asteroid pass by which was a pale green color which is about the opening of the heart chakra energy that was also a 50,000 year asteroid and we talk about the melting of the glacial caps and uh, sorry the glacial ice and polar caps which could be 50,000 year records of water and all the DNA they have in it and the messaging and the historical energy fields that will come out there's something here about the past coming back to either shape us or to ship us on or to move us on or to open up new doors or paradigms or energies there's something big coming and I mean it like so big we still can't comprehend it and we're still not entirely sure what it is it will alter the very nature of of what we are and where we're headed this ten of wands which was the first one out indicates hard times just hard graft whether or not we've been through this hardness and we have certainly for New Zealand since the beginning of this year is it saying we've got 10 months of hard graft to go you know is, is there 10 months of more this is about the person who has learnt something but they take it with them as they move into the future is this telling us are we to take learnings with us have we learned enough as we move forward so don't drop what you've learnt. There's an important aspect here of understanding the knowledge that you've learnt and being able to utilise it without having it feel like a burden on your shoulders. Because I think for a lot of us we've felt very burdened for a very long time. Understandably because our lives have changed. They've been tipped upside down and put into this topsy-turvy realm. But it's important to understand that what you learnt wasn't so much a burden, but it's knowledge to take forward. And the knowledge could be powerful and important. And in fact, this card here is also the past. You know, we're talking about the past, whether it's 
remembering the past or wanting to feel how good the past used to be, how easy life was back then, as it was. But this is also about realigning with the past and somehow bringing in the love that, that resided there. So this is about harmony and balance and going back to places of connection of the heart in particular these flowers are being passed to each other across the heart chakra and we talked about that before and this is the opening of the heart chakra as well so there's a lot of message in this these three cards alone that talk to me about the value of the heart and the value of awakening the heart and feeling that powerful energy of what love can can do for us and how it can hold us together and it's interesting that what, what do we have here a whole bunch of heart shaped crystals that are giving off this beautiful powerful energy of love so some of you may be finding people from the past are coming back into your life or that the past is very relevant or that you find information or connection to knowledge understanding awareness about your journey or your, your connections as you move forward, the past is somehow related. And this one here, the lovers, the lovers is about new opportunities, new bonds, new relationships, and new partnerships. So new partnerships could be forming. And when I'm thinking this is a general overall reading for the globe or for the energy of the people on the planet, it's lovely that love is in the air, that's harmony, that's, that's togetherness, that's coming together as a group, but not in the form of a diminished group of like a one holding the power and the others being subjugated to it. This is honest, open love and it's equal partnership. These are equals here, neither is better than the other. No one has more power than the other. It's an partnership where everyone's values are accepted and reflected and when we have that balance we have expansion and when we have expansion there is no contraction because contraction takes us back down to that energy of I have nothing and I will be happy you know that mantra of the world economic forum you will have nothing and you will be happy you don't need that in life we can have everything and be happy we can all work harmoniously together even with different beliefs if we value each other's belief so I'm not sure what else those cards are particularly pertaining to this this could be going back in time again to the gods these could be gods that we're talking about that are opening up portals of power of change of opportunity of energy we'll see a lot of you may be visiting places of the past or going back to heal relationships that may have been harmed or to try and find harmony within situations that may have occurred in childhood like you may rebond with with family or friends from the past or there may be healing that you want to have take place I often view this card as a healing there may be a global healing that happens for some reason now I'm not sure what that would be and it might be something sent up towards Turkey and Syria for instance um, there may be healing that gets sent up that way let's take a look at the Psy cards and see what is in store for the rest of February and for March for the whole of Earth. The skills card has come out first. I'm really, really interested in those four balloon things that have been shot down recently. We can assume that the first one was definitely from China because they've already said they're annoyed about it being shot down. But to date, no one else seems to be talking or we haven't heard any information to say that the other three belong to anyone. No one seems to be claiming them. Wow, the puzzle coming out. You know, if you've followed me in the past, this is one of the big enigmas of life. When the puzzle comes... We're, we are puzzled as humanity and even when the wheel comes, this is the turning of the wheel, the change of evolution and these two together seem very, very powerful. So this, I do feel that 
you know, we're on the path for just unbelievable change. Changes that we find hard to comprehend and that we have to adapt to, but also which change is the right change. And we have to be very, very careful on what we allow to come in there. We don't want to just take the change that is being forced upon us by a few elite power hungry overlords just a couple more from the side deck okay so we have I'll move the hearts back out the first four so we've got seven all up I'm looking at these two over here really interesting to me this was the first one out the skills and I've always said in the past that the skills card actually seems to be someone has shot those arrows and the arrows have gone up and then come back down and landed now that we've got arrows again down here and the father is pointing up and the son is about to point the arrow up and shoot it into the air and again that will come to down and land because that's the nature of physics. What goes up must come down. So these two cards being under each other seem to have a synergy in their position of placement and just what they are, bows and arrows. They're very much warrior energy so they're very much talking about war and I've heard a few posts lately, you know, are they preparing us for World War Three? Well, certainly the war in Russia and Ukraine is still ongoing. There doesn't seem to be any settling of anything there. It could be referring to that. It could be referring to new opportunities of war globally, anywhere. Let's face it, we seem on the edge of the possibility of, of war within countries at any point, whether it's America and China, whether it's China and other countries like Japan, you know, China making moves in the South Pacific with some of the other things they're doing. Is it North Korea? Is it South Korea? Those two fighting. Is it the Middle East erupting? Is it um, Europe expanding its war? It's all unknown at this stage, but there's warring tensions in the air, and they were the that was the first one to come out. So it could be referring to that, but I think often when I'm analysing these cards, these things have to do with something coming from space. And this guy's pointing up, and he has a rather bereft look on his face. He's like, oh my God, look, look what's up there. See if you look on his face. He, he looks sort of like, oh, oh my God, and the kid's trying to shoot it down. So are those metal balloon type things, are they something else? You know, look, I am a bit of a conspiracy theorist. And the great thing about conspiracy theories now is they say conspiracy theorists are just people who know the truth before the mainstream know the truth. And I really like that analogy of it. Could those things in the sky be something more unusual? Could they be alien technology? But is there a possibility that we find more potential alien stuff out there? There's new technology now that they've just started in the SETI, which is the Search for Extraterrestrial Information Program, and it is so much more sophisticated and they have already found nine frequencies that they believe could be extraterrestrial noises coming from different star systems. So there is the possibility that we hear more about, there's a possibility of other civilizations either having had existed or do exist currently out there and maybe we are trying to make connection with them or we learn more information about them. This can also mean things crossing our solar system and we've just had this, this the 50,000 year green asteroid, right? So there'll be other things that we see, other meteorites, asteroids, there'll be a whole bunch of things that are brought to our attention. I think the, st the stars and the skies are going to be very, very active as we move through this decade and we will learn more and more about what's out there or how to utilize that space or what we're doing to it. 
you know we're also uploading so much stuff up there again as typical humans we often rush into things without thinking of the consequences and there may be consequences coming for the stuff we're putting in space so that's another way of thinking of it the wheel is very much symptomatic or um, very similar to the never-ending wheel the changing wheel of fortune it's like the card of the wheel of fortune it means things are changing we're coming into a new evolution a new cycle and there is no stopping it it's the preparation of it it's the acknowledgement of knowing that it's coming it also has a lot of water in it and it's fast moving water and so does this card the birth card it's a mountain that seems to be loaded what well, a mountain it's not it's it's probably a plant growing, truth be known, and it, but it's loaded with water on it. And in the back, there's, this is very, very heavy laden sky with intense rain. And again, both of those cards point to intense pressure or rain or movement of water coming down. Now, we've just experienced that in New Zealand, as I have said in the earlier introduction before the cards. Now, this feels like some sort of triangulated energy field here we've got the wheel the home and birth all connected together with the puzzle in between now the home card often signifies where I live and we've talked about New Zealand quite significantly in the introduction and the changes that are taking place there and how I feel how sinister dark energy has been moving through New Zealand and is it part of the puzzle now the puzzle card also to me for some odd reason often gives me the feeling of Canada. It must be this thing down here looks like a maple leaf. And of course I've said that the whole Trudeau, Ardern thing has been very odd. You know the, the two of them are, are sickly sweet together. And we have this person here like a, a someone with a crown holding keys with this look of disdain on their face. And there's two doors. Is it like we're locking them up or we've been locked up? Or does somehow that union between the two people or the leaders of these two countries, is it being thwarted or is it strengthening or is it going into hiding or are there things going on behind closed doors? I mean, that's just one analogy of, of the possibilities that it could be. But I'm hoping it's the beginning of the breaking of the junction of this socialist move to the left. Um, are the two of them going to get imprisoned, which would be a great thing indeed. I don't know if that will ever happen. Look, in terms of New Zealand, it's happened in the minds of the people. She lost so much respect. She, people were crossing the road to not walk on the same side of the road as her that's how powerful it had become and she wasn't going to face another 10 months of that leading up to um, an election because it was becoming worse and worse and whilst I don't condone this ever which I think is appalling there had been death threats to her and her family and that is not acceptable at any level there's no need for that um, you deal with the type of energy she was bringing to us by just moving them out, just moving them on, de-empowering them. And that was all that we were doing for the most part. Not, death threats are not appropriate for anyone. So there's, the puzzle is an enigma and I can never tell you what it means, but what I can tell you is there's something big coming, something we don't know, we don't understand. Sometimes I refer to this as we are incapable yet of understanding the puzzle and that's why it's not known to us we are not instructed enough we're not intelligent enough yet about the ideas or the concepts that it's holding and it will be opened to us bit by bit when we're ready or can comprehend it at a greater depth so that's what the puzzle card can also mean this birth card can also mean movement of mountains. That looks like an eruption to me. So volcanic, especially volcanic, could be undersea volcanic, which we've already had uh, one recently. And of course, we had the big Tongan one a year ago on January the 15th. It was actually the day the Tongan erupt, uh, volcano erupted a year ago. 
Uh, so there's a possibility of more undersea volcanic eruptions, just again part of Earth's cycle of change. Uh, this could be land volcanic eruptions or earthquakes. It can also mean crops being severely impaired and we've had massive crop impairment here in New Zealand and I think globally we know there is a food shortage and that will just be more of an issue as we move on, the food shortages. The prison, well I sure as hell, I'll just have another drink here guys, I think you know who I'd like to see in prison. Um, will they get there? I doubt it. They're not going to trial any of these leaders and most of the time the leaders get off scot-free and they say that they were doing the best job possible and for the most part the media seems to portray it that way. But what the prison can say is we have been in a state of being locked down and we have been kept from the light. See this tiny shaft of light and this person shackled and no food again. So food shortages are a really big issue for this year but further as we go on. And we know that they're trying to cut back food production around the globe and that is part of their agenda to starve citizens and keep them poor and in poverty. And that's part of the WEF as well. This whole look at um, Holland and or the Netherlands how badly the farmers have had everything culled there and in New Zealand they've made some terrible uh, farming projections to cull production for our farmers in New Zealand so, who are some of the best on the planet in terms of eco awareness if you want for a better word or emission standards. There has been some really really cruel agenda going on from the top down in this on this planet and is this tied into the puzzle as well are we going to see some of them brought to trial you know and brought to trial over other things like the jab as well because that has been an absolute incredible tale of of abuse against um, humanity so yeah we could go on and on the home card, as I've said before, links to my home, New Zealand, and sometimes the islands around it, or Australia as well, and it can mean events are happening here, like events that are brought to global attention. Well, I know the uh, weather event we've just had will be massive global attention. Our political disturbances are global attention. We may have other things that happen here as well, and it can, as I say, reference the local areas such as Australia and the islands around us but generally when I see this card come out I think of things that are not necessarily pleasant and think of things about disruption more than anything. I wonder just for the sake of it what's on the bottom of the deck. <laughs> yes the libido and again this is powerful rushing surging water it is massive storms, mud storms, um, things falling down and we've had a lot of that in New Zealand. We've had a lot of houses lost off cliffs and people's lives lost that have been killed in mud falls and mud slips and things along those lines. The libido card brings out mass compassion at global levels and so these are events like the the earthquakes in Turkey that create mass compassion globally and I don't think this is referring to the Turkey eruption or sorry earthquake I think this is referring to things coming so we're in for change quick rapid change at many many levels this also when we see the snake we know we're referring to change at spiritual at the higher level at the level of awareness of understanding of raising awareness of compassion of spiritual connectivity of the body's kundalini energy rising we also see animals as well and so animals can quite often suffer in the libido but the libido card is one of power penultimate power and penultimate action and I usually think of it as being earth's Gaia's action so we haven't finished yet with water, with land movement, with sea movement, with um, the stars, with the planets, with the alignments and with things coming in and going as well. 
so I just wanted to perhaps do a little bit more with the cards and I really love this deck as well which is an interesting deck the energy oracle cards and we have so much energy going on around us at the moment that I thought these cards might be able to tell a little bit of a picture the temple path number 12 what is in store for us all as we move from February into March what is the overall energetic feeling of people on the planet and what are the messages to bring in quite a few here we'll just oh we might pick the lot wow love again love is the is the energy to think of the temple path is the awakening of the higher self the enlightenment the, the connection to all that is bringing raising the frequencies the journey is definitely what we are all on and we are only on the beginning of this change of journey and the caring connections as I've just said is basically the lovers card so the lovers card has come out twice and when cards emulate themselves and bring the energy out twice within a reading the message is even deeper and then there's the angel of love has come out as well oh wow and then a broken heart and then we have two uh, magnificent energies coming in Archangel Metatron the sixth chakra which is the third eye which is seeing and understanding at the higher level raising your vibration to being open and aware to the messages that can come in and the healer of the ages is in my mind in this deck is the Christed white energy and of course we're coming into March when we come into the Easter time and we will be in the energy of love white light awakening and healing and I talked about through the other cards when we had the Rider Waite deck out I said it feels as if there needed to be healing and this could be healing of the past and these two numbers equal six five and one is six and five and one is six so this healing and a need for healing to come in to the planet and to the people in particular to the people who have been honest and loving and caring in the past and perhaps so slightly older people maybe like myself who have come through and been discombobulated or been separated or segregated somehow there is a healing that needs to be done to so many on the planet um, and I think the healing energy is starting to come back into the waveform on the planet and this could come from the waters that we talked about before so this going back in time could be going back into the past really long way and utilizing the power of water that is being released on the planet which will have healing codices within them because some of these will be from Atlantean energy it will be from you know ages that we had no understanding or comprehension about where they used a different form of telepathy of energy of enhancement of electrification all sorts and a lot of it was actually done through the power of the crystal and I mean people think crystals like you can see the crystals in the background there oh they go it's all just new age blah blah hippie ya da junk well crystals are what make our watches and our computers go so without crystals we actually wouldn't have technology that's how powerful the quartz crystals can be the energy of them most of all of the, our modern technology and power is originated from the quartz crystal so there's something about this reignition of from the very very past 50 to 60,000 years ago with the recreation of the water coming back to realign us or re-instruct us or heal us as we move forward and transit into the new the new you the new us the new age 
and we have only just begun the journey at number two. We need a strategy to understand it and the journaling can be very, very important in terms of connecting with the higher self, of receiving messages, of understanding what is written down. This could be particularly important for political movement forward for countries or for anyone taking lawsuits or uh, wanting to correct wrongs that have been done. There might be a key that is going to be opened soon. I thought I saw a key somewhere else as well. I'm not sure now. Um, there may be a key that is either going to be opened or provided in terms of strategies and implementations and legal perspectives of moving forward. I also see like the Star of David here and the power again of information that's coming to us from a very long time ago that may help to free us up. I notice the compass here. We talk about the poles changing directions and the shifts in the poles. I wonder if we find out some more information about polar changes one way or another and what is coming in or something to do and I've talked before a lot about the polar caps melting and the water coming down and it giving us information perhaps from journals long gone or information long kept and that it can be used to deploy as a strategy or open Pandora's box and we find more information. We could go deep and deep as like as far as we like. You know, we've had a lot of broken hearts for, for a lot of different reasons. And yes, there is healing required and it is, it is on its way. But there is a lot of healing work to be done. And the healing is definitely available to us through the light workers, through the ones that can heal the emotional pain, but also heal the physical body and the spiritual body as well and these ones in particular are very good at helping to heal the spiritual body and the emotional trauma that goes with that. Then we have the angel of love, uh, very poignant again for um, she is giving herself self-love in particular and she is healing this broken heart. So for anyone who has suffered loss and trauma recently, especially here in New Zealand and especially in Turkey, and Syria, may these angels of love and the healing power and frequency of the pink aura and the green be given to you to help heal broken hearts. And that could be for any different reason, whether it's a physical loss of a person in your life or a physical loss of a companion or a business or a property, or your financial status, or your emotional status, or your personal feelings, or a spiritual aspect of you, or anything. May there be healing that takes place. And remember that the big, the big uh, kahunas is on the bottom there, doing a lot of that work, bringing that through for you. There's a lot of um, beautiful, the six, the nine, the nine, the three, they all play roles in being magical numbers in the universe. And then we just come back to all of this unbelievable love that is in the reading. So, so much potential propagation of love that if we focus on the love, we can heal so much at so many different levels. We can congeal things. We can bring about positivity, we can raise the frequency, we can stop the negativity. This is, they're all relatively young in terms of other than I mentioned that these could be gods uh, from, from a long time back coming in. But if we look at them, these two in particular are still children and these are young people as well, perhaps in their early 20s if that. These two definitely, to me, speak of something greater or older. Even though they look young, they feel very, very old in this card at this particular point in time, as if they hold the key to the energy of love. And it's coming from antiquity or some form of ancient perspective coming into the planet, perhaps. 
They could be tied into the Christ and white love, the Easter type energy, which is coming in for March. They could be tied into the asteroid, the 50,000 year asteroid that was coming, that's just passed away around. Anyhow, that is the reading for today, taking us into March. And I think it's a beautiful way to end with all this love potentiality and protection and healing capacity coming in. So I hope you've enjoyed that, guys. It's a kind of just an, an introduction again to some of the thoughts and feelings that have been going around, flying around the planet and creating a lot of different <laughs> havoc one might say so yeah thank you all for joining i love it when you leave your comments when you share your information your perspectives of the cards what you pick up from up i really hope that all of you pick up this beautiful absolutely glorious pinky greeny hue that is uh, coming across the screen and that i hope you enjoy the experience of the peaceful vibe of love and especially around this February the 14th, Valentine's Day, which is a day imbued with amour. So much amour, much love. Namaste.